played on that. <laughs> right? How crazy would that be? Bro, you just literally fly across my screen. Like, this one's gonna be... What is up everybody, I am GetFlanked, and today I have some early access Operation Void Edge gameplay for you. Ubisoft was nice enough to fly me out to Montreal, put me up in a hotel, and give me access to all of the content coming with Operation Void Edge. And in this video, we're going to be going over the new Defender that's coming this season, and that is Oryx. So in this video, you will see actual gameplay of me using orcs in real games. You're also going to see a lot of gameplay that takes place on the newly reworked Oregon map. Uh, I'm going to go over his loadout, I'll go over his gadget, how everything works. The goal of this video is really just to give you an understanding of orcs. That way, when he comes out, you can decide if this is somebody that's going to appeal to you and your playstyle. Now, towards the end of the video, I will be giving my opinion as far as how strong I think Oryx is, you know, how big of an impact I could see him having in ranked. I uh, also kind of go over what players I think will, you know, gravitate towards Oryx. So stick around to, towards the end if you want to know that kind of opinion stuff. Uh, right now, we're going to jump straight into his loadout and go over everything there. Okay, so first things first, Oryx is a two armor, two speed defender. His unique gadget is called the Rayma Dash. And the description for that is that it's a fast dash for faster roaming, breaches breakable walls, and pushes back opponents. We're going to go into all the details on how that gadget works, what all it does in just a second. Let me carry on here with a loadout first. Getting into the equipment part of Orcs' loadout, he has two primary weapon options. The first is the MP5. This is the exact same SMG that both Doc and Rook have available to them on defense. The only thing it's missing is that big ACOG. Yes, this weapon for Orcs will not have an ACOG. Uh, every other attachment seems to be the same, but it's missing the ACOG. So that's a, that's a big thing that it's missing there and honestly the mp5 without the acog is not a great weapon uh, the other primary option is a shotgun that's the spaz 12 shotgun that valkyrie has available to her uh, I do think most people will probably be choosing that mp5 uh, even though it's not a great weapon especially without the acog I still think most people will probably end up using that over the shotgun Moving on to his secondary options, he has a choice between the Bailiff, that is the shotgun pistol that Maestro and Alibi both have available to them, as well as the USP-40. That's a semi-automatic pistol. I think that the vast majority of players are going to be choosing that Bailiff just because it synergizes so well with his gadget. Part of his gadget is that he can jump up hatches. So you want to be bringing the Bailiff so that you can open up hatches and go up those hatches. If you're not playing the shotgun as your primary weapon, you're definitely going to want to be bringing that Bailiff. So I see most people bringing that MP5 with the Bailiff as a secondary. That makes the most sense to me. As far as the gadget options, he can bring either barbed wire or bulletproof cam. I know most people use usually gravitate towards barbed wire but i think for him there's a real reason to consider that bulletproof cam if you can open a hatch in the prep phase place a bulletproof cam there then you could check that bulletproof clamp cam later in the round see if there's somebody there that you can sneak up on by coming up the hatch or just to tell you if it's clear to rotate that hatch later in the round i do think there's there's reason to consider the bulletproof cam with orcs for sure Okay, with the loadout out of the way, let's get into some gameplay. I'm going to play a couple clips now. The first one's going to be me kind of just messing around in a custom game, showing you how he can run through walls, he can come up hatches, uh, and getting to see that visually for yourself. The second clip will be an actual gameplay clip, and I think it really demonstrates his strengths and how I can see a lot of people playing him. After that, we'll come back in, we'll break down his gadgets, I'll talk about some interactions that it has with other operators, and then finally I'll give you my opinions on orcs at the end. Down to five seconds. <laughs> Increase surveillance on bombs. Op 4 has a diffuser.
where's he at? Where's he at? Op 4 found a bomb. You must defend it. Okay, so that second clip there, I think, really demonstrates the potential of Oryx. The fact that I rotated up that hatch. I did something that attackers have never had to worry about up until this point in the game. And we'll go into more on that here later. Let me first break down exactly how his unique ability works here, okay? I think the best way to start is to say that it really has three primary functions. Um, his unique gadget or ability, whatever you want to call it. And they all draw from the same pool. So you'll see in the gameplay that there is um, a counter down there with his gadget. And the max that he can have available at any given time is three. And they do recharge over time. Now, he can do uh, basically three different things with it. He can just move faster. So by pushing the gadget button, he will dash forward and move faster throughout the map. He can use three of those in a row if he wants. There will be a slight pause in between. But if you're trying to rotate up a staircase or around like a traditional operator would, you can just use that and move faster in doing so. Um, you can also use that to go through soft walls. Uh, again, it draws from the same bank. Um, and when you do that, it's going to take 10 damage. You cannot go through reinforced walls. You can't go through walls that aren't soft. Okay, You can only go through soft walls. And... Um, when you do, there's going to be a slight pause between going through the wall and being able to draw your weapon. It's not like you can just breach the wall and kill everybody instantly. Um, if you would happen to hit anybody that's on the other side of that wall, you will knock them back and stun them. You will not do any damage. The third primary function with this gadget is to go up hatches. And when you go up hatches, you have two options. You can just go up it, climb up, and then end up on the other side. Or you can climb up, hang on, and look up that hatch. And you saw that in the first clip um, that I showed there on house. So that's the three primary functions. If I decide to um, use it once to this dash and then go up a hatch and then use it again to go through a wall, I now have zero left and I have to wait for it to recharge to get it back, okay? So no matter what way you use his gadget, it does draw from the bank of his gadget availability, if that makes sense. If you do happen to climb up on a hatch and just look and then drop back down, it does not use one of his gadget uses, okay? Uh, so it, it's important to know that he has a max of three available at any given time. If he uses all three, he will gain more later in the round after it recharges. Another function of his gadget that I think could be used, but I don't think it's going to be that useful in all honesty, is that he can dash into uh, attackers and stun them. It doesn't do any damage to the attackers, but if you use his gadget to dash into attackers, it will knock them down and uh, stun them, similar to if you would happen to run into an air jab. Now, one area where I could see this being used uh, quite effectively is with a Montaigne. Montaigne can have his full shield up, and if you use Oryx to uh, run into him, it will knock him down, and then you can melee or shoot him and kill him. The timing is pretty close. You have to be pretty quick about you know getting off your shots or meleeing him just right while he's uh, stunned and downed. But definitely a really strong aspect to his gadget if you come up against a Monty. Um, a Monty in full shield is not safe against this guy. As far as other operator interactions and counters, there really isn't any operator that just stops him from being able to do what he does and actually use his gadget. Uh, a Nomad air jab placed upon a hatch if he goes up it, it will activate the air jab and knock him back just like it would anybody else. So I guess you could consider that a, a potential counter. Maybe even gridlock, you know, throwing the tracks around a, um, a hatch would do damage once he pops up unless he shoots them all out. Beyond that, I can't really think of any like hard counters to him. You know, people that are going to stop him from doing exactly what he does. I guess a claymore <laughs> would probably be the hardest counter. You know, if you place a claymore by a, an open hatch and he comes up and isn't paying attention and runs into it, he's going to die. So, yeah, that would definitely be uh, a way of, you know, stopping him from rotating on certain hatches. But um, as far as how other operators interact with him, nobody can really stop him from doing what he does. 
One interesting interaction with Castle is that his dash destroys the castle immediately. So if you are off-site and you want to come back and you're castled out, you can use the dash to go through a castle barricade really quickly without having to go through the animation you normally would to rip it down. Um, so that's important to know. Okay, so hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of exactly how Orcs works and how his loadout looks and everything. Let's get into more of the opinion stuff now. And as far as Orcs and my thoughts on them, I am a little bit torn on how strong I think he can be. Um, I think the potential for him to rotate up hatches is really strong. Um, I think that it opens up a lot of possibilities for like late flanks. I think it uh, is going to cause the attackers to have to worry about something they never have before. In that opening clip, you saw how fast I went from the basement of bank all the way up to CEO. And that is pretty strong. I mean, that can definitely be used in game. With that said, I'm not sure that going through soft walls is going to be that useful. Um, maybe I'll be wrong about that. I just can't see in my head how that's going to be that useful. Um, I'm sure there'll be times when when you'll use it and you know get some utility out of it, but I just don't see it being used very often. Um, I don't think that uh, that's the strongest part of him. I, I, I think it's cool. Um, I definitely do. But I think the hatch part is what's really strong with him. And just the fact that attackers are going to have to... No longer can attackers just go take map control, put a nomad above each staircase, and know that nobody can flank them. Like they, They're going to have to worry about the hatches now and other possible rotates because of an orx on the board. And that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I think that has the potential to be really strong. I definitely think that he's really fun to play. When you jump up a hatch and then pull off a flank on somebody, that's a really cool feeling. So I think there's going to be a lot of players that do gravitate towards orcs. He's definitely going to appeal to anybody who likes to roam. Uh, that's the immediate thing that comes to mind for him is anybody who likes to roam. I could see, as strange as it sounds, I could see uh, a Jaeger player, um, a Vigil. I could see a, a Valkyrie in a lot of ways. Uh, player be interested in giving orcs uh, a look um, and there's a lot of reasons why but I think the big thing is just uh, Valkyrie players kind of have that sense of how to rotate around the map in the late stages based on the information that they have so if you combine orcs with a Valkyrie you know somebody who can feed that orcs information based upon where the enemy is and the orcs can make smart decisions about which hats to rotate up that could be a really strong duo so I do think that People who enjoy roaming will want to give Orcs a look, and I'm going to be really excited to see how he plays out. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Keep your eyes open later for today. I'll probably have the other new operator video out. That's uh, Yana. She's the attacker, so be on the lookout for that. Um, whenever it is out, I'll link it in the top right-hand corner of the screen right now. So if it's live right now, you can click there and go to it. If it's not live yet, just check back later today. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure that you like and subscribe, and I'll have more coming your way here soon.